again. Um, welcome back. I got asked uh, a question by uh, um, I call him a friend of my channel. He watches some of my videos called Dean Lloyd, um, and he asked me about how I go about rendering an album, for example, or you know. Um, he didn't specify is he going to burn CDs? Is he just rendering to hard disk? I don't know. So I'm going to cover a couple of different avenues, okay? So, I mean, the first thing I will do with every mastering session that I've got, here I've got in front of me a four-track EP by a band called Damage, and I've got some effects going on. Um, I've also just kind of leveled out some of the levels on the tracks using the clip gain here. You know, you can use the, the inbuilt clip gain just to do it by eye. Um, obviously you use your ears, get all these things right, you know. So I've got all four tracks here in front of me. So as you can see, there's four separate tracks. Now the first thing I would do is at the beginning of each track is set in a marker. Now if we go up into the actions, let's just see. Um, let's insert marker. And we should have a couple of options here. So we've got, uh, where are we now? Insert marker at edit cursor, or up here where the one that I use is M, insert marker at current position. Or the shift M, insert and or edit marker at current position. So I'll show you both of them. So let's just do the, the insert marker, which was the M. And that's simply, as you can see here, if you look at my mouse, it's inserted a marker, called it number one at that position. But let's undo that. And if we do shift M, then we're asked to name. So let's call this track one, and it's called the king. Okay, and there's our marker now set in called the king. Now, I would do this for every track. If we go in here, I'm not going to do the, the naming up. Let's just put the markers in quickly uh, to keep the video length down. So if we go to the start of each track, just drop in the marker. Uh, and then here we are. Okay, so now we've got our four markers for our four tracks, okay? So as you can see, these mark the beginning of each track. Now if we go back to the beginning, the second thing I do, and again, this is to cover a lot of bases here, if we go, again go up to the actions, um, and we put in create region. Right, we can have create regions from selected items, name by active take, name by item, or we can have it name by items, notes. Now, these aren't the usual ones that I use. You, we can use them. Another way I like to do it, um, if we uh, make a time selection around our track, now we can do a Shift R, and that will create a region from time selection. That's in the actions list as well, but to keep the video a little bit shorter, if you search for some of these actions, then we can edit the region and again call it uh, number one, the king. Okay? So then we can do that for the other uh, tracks. And if we do shift R again. So we've now got our four regions. We've got our four markers, all of which will be named etc etc okay so that's the initial stage so we're at that so now you've got a lot of options to choose from so if we go up to a render menu and if we hit file uh, render now i like to use the regions to name the file so if we go in here you can see you've got a lot of different choices on what to use as a structure of naming your file. This is why I like to name my regions because I found that's the best way to do it. So you just click on that dollar region sign here and that your, your tracks that you render out will then be called by whatever name you've given to your regions. 
Okay, so in the case of track one here, if my mouse decides to play, it will be called the king. Okay. So, let's decide that we're going to save this to hard disk. I want my four individual tracks. I would then go up to the bounds here at the top and select project regions. Okay. So as you can see here at the bottom, now we're now going to render four files. That's because we're going to render four individual tracks based on the, the regions. Okay. You have to choose where you want to where you want to render it to. Um, and obviously the file type you want. Let's choose WAVE 24-bit. You can do 24-bit and 16-bit and set up render queues. It's up to you. Uh, or you can choose MP3 if you've got the Lame encoder installed. So it's up to you. I generally like to do a 24-bit WAVE as my first thing that I will render, and then I'll do a 16-bit and on and on and on. Um, and I'll have a 320-bit um, MP3 for the client as well, so that when they're uploading to the internet. Um, and then you just hit render, and it will render those four individual tracks uh, at whatever settings you've got going on here, in the either WAVE or MP3 or whatever. Uh, you can choose to dither. I only do dither when I'm going to going from 24-bit to 16-bit. So if I'm record, going to render it at 16-bit, I would hit dither. And that just adds a little bit of noise just to, to cover up the, the artifacts. And we're good to go. Now, the next way of doing it is we can render out a Q stroke bin file, it's called. And what that will give us is I could then directly burn CDs from my computer if I choose. So if we go in, and this is where the markers come into play, okay? So if we hit render, and I'm going to choose the entire project again, okay? And if we come down here and then select the audio CD image cube in format, okay? Now what this will do is you can see markers define new tracks. You can use regions, etc., but that will give you again four separate tracks as we got before. I want to use the markers because what that will do is it will give me one big file, but when you burn it to a CD, it will it will individually burn each each track and name it as according to my region, as I called it here. Um, or whatever you decide to name them, you can do it. Uh, you can also, within this, choose to burn your CD image after render. So you can burn your CDs, and then it will ask you how many you want to burn. Uh, I'm not going to do that at the moment, but take my word for it. Um, or you can save this CD Q stroke bin format, send it to your uh, CD burning factory or whatever, wherever you're getting a CD is burnt, and they will use it to then burn your album or EP or whatever, okay? And then you just hit render, and off it goes. So same as before with the the, um, the regions, just this time you're burning a Q file that will be used to burn CDs at a later date. So I hope that was useful, I hope that was helpful, and uh Dean, I hope I answered your question, and I'll see you in the next one, people, hopefully with some big and bad news that's going on. Um, again, apologies for the lack of videos, but I am just so up to my eyes in it, and there's big things afoot in uh, the Larkin household that are going to change things um, big time with my home studio, etc. So, yeah. Keep, keep tuned and I'll, I'll keep you up to date as soon as I've got the, the information. I'll let you know what's happening. But again, thanks for your loyalty and support and thanks for the really kind words. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.